It's time. Mark Watson, the Apologise to Me podcast. What are we talking about? We're talking about New Zealand rugby going public. Was this a leak? It certainly looked like it about choosing your coach before the Rugby World Cup. The stupid, dumb, unnecessary five-game super rugby rule. Netflix, the Six Nations doco, and the worries that Gatlin has. (sighs) The gay all-black comes out. New Zealand football ducking for cover over the Saudi sponsorship of the FIFA Women's World Cup. Apologise to me! But let's kick it off with why, why, why are millennials reckon the world what oh this Delilah thing from Wales? What do you make of it? Well, I'm sure that the same people that shut the Wellington Sevens down probably got Welsh citizenship and decided that they needed something else to shut down and this is just once again stupidity, isn't it? This is just once again showing that the world is just ruled by a minority, that how easy it is to be offended. I mean, if you look at a lot of songs, Martin Devlin, and you break them down, mate, there's a lot of innuendo in them, whether it be sexual innuendo. Um, I mean, a lot of the songs that are quite catchy, not, really, not too many people actually ever really sit down and study the lyrics to them. And it's only when you do study the lyrics, you could find a lot of negative connotations in a lot of songs. I mean, I'm just sick and tired of everybody telling us what's offensive. I mean, at what point do I have my say? I mean, I'm not a religious man. So should we get rid of God, save the Queen? Should we get rid of our national anthem because of some, you know, we're asking to be defended by some sort of mythical creature in the sky? No, I don't because I don't look into it like that. It's, it's part of our history. It's part of our tradition. I get where it was written. I guess what it was all about. And I, I just think this is stupidity. When are people going to stop trying to appease the minority? When are people going to stop trying to moral police us? If you don't like it being sung, leave the stadium, put some earplugs in, or just simply don't turn up. Because I tell you what, these same people that are offended, I'm pretty sure, have a lot of things going on in their life that I'm sure if really other people could probably be quite offended by too. But they don't bother saying anything, do they? I mean, it's just ridiculous. That is totally ridiculous. These sports all- these sports organisations, as I said to you the other week, Martin, mankind is flawed. Stop trying to make out that we're perfect and therefore trying to build a model around mankind being perfect. Except we're flawed and just build a product that factors that in, that we like to listen to Delilah. It's one of the great songs. It's so Welsh. It's It's sing-along. It's a banger. Do you know what's going to happen? And I encourage every single fan to go into that stadium and sing it non-stop. Just a finger in the face of you stupid, dumb, millennial people, you wokesters, uh, you, you, you fun police that are trying to destroy the world for the rest of us. Same exactly for Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. You know, somebody gets offended at that. What, do, 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 do poor people in the deep south who actually have a history of slavery, have they written to the England, English rugby? They didn't even know that the people sang it. And when they sing it, they, it's, it's not about that to them. It's about something what? else. Things evolve, Mark. It's like the Lord's Prayer evolves. Yeah. Everything evolves. What we think of something today isn't what we thought yesterday. Otherwise, we'd be sitting here going, we're never going to drive a Japanese car because of what you did to granddad during the war. We're never going to talk ever oh. to a German again. I mean, where does it bloody start? Stop, mate. Well, but that's exactly right. And the problem is, and it's been, it was highlighted in a, in a, in a, um, in a YouTube clip I saw with um, Dr. Jordan, Jordan Peterson, who's probably the greatest orator on the planet, who just brings common sense to a lot of us. And he does talk. He just talks about a lot of the stuff starts at the university. We've got a lot of the left now, and predominantly women who have inundated the humanities, have inundated the social sciences, and this is where it's all coming from. But let's tell us who these people are who are offended, Martin. I want to know who they are. And it's the same thing. So what? Going forward in society, if we're sitting in a room, am I allowed to offend one in a hundred people? Am I allowed to offend, what, ten in a hundred? I mean, what is the level of offence before we shut it down, Martin? And this is the problem with it. Where does it go? Because if you speak to a thousand people and you're challenging something or you're doing something, you can guarantee, whether it be a particular piece of music, a particular piece of language you use, there's probably going to be someone in that room that's going to be offended. So why shouldn't we then protect them like we're apparently protecting these people who have come out and said, don't sing this song? I mean, and you know what will happen here? Little woke old New Zealand, little woke old New Zealand rugby union will jump on the band. Of course they will. And you know, a song yeah. like Victoria 
which if you actually read the lyrics of it's about a prostitute you can sort of get that's right it's about a prostitute yeah, yeah. and so one of the great new zealand songs hey let's stop playing that because we don't want the mean women we don't want to encourage people to go out after the game and go and sleep with a prostitute i mean it's absolutely ridiculous martin and i've just had a guts full and i'm sick and tired of it and what i love about your show what i love about the platform is finally we've got a platform where we can just speak, say what we want yeah, to say, totally. and just allow freedom of speech, mate. I sit there every day. I pick up the hill. There's a lot of things in there. There's a lot of journalists and stuff who write stuff that offend me, that I find offensive. But you know what? I know that I'm smart enough. Mark, don't read it if you find it offensive. Don't buy the paper. Or, or at least then use another medium to maybe come out and challenge some of their rhetoric and have the discussion. Apologise to me! Let's move on to a topic that I know is going to be a massive bugbear of yours. The five-game super rugby rule. I've written a column about how absolutely ridiculous this is on many, many levels for NBR this week. But the most offensive thing to me about it is, once again, New Zealand rugby stuffing a finger in the face of all the fans alongside Sky TV and saying, listen, we don't give a stuff what you think. We're not going to consult you about this, uh, regardless of you're going to watch our sport anyway, which we're not because in ever-increasing numbers, people are turning off rugby. Mark, so many uh, questions about this. You can play only five Super Rugby games in a row. It doesn't matter how many minutes you play in each of those games. A guy called Jerry Collins loved playing so much that after he played for the All Blacks on a Saturday, he would actually go under a false name and play Rugby League on a Sunday. How on earth can these stupid, dumb sports scientists blanket across and be allowed to blanket across and say, oh no, because these people have played so many minutes, so many games, they aren't allowed to. Some of these players would love to play. That's one thing. But the worst thing for me is is you're shortchanging us as fans. You've taken the best players out of the Black Ferns. They're now at the Sevens, or Ruby Two. He's gone to Sky. And what we're faced with now is we're faced with the prospect of buying a ticket to one of these games, say the Blues versus the Hurricanes, and you go along and there's no Geordie, there's no Artie, there's no Bowden, there's no Dalton Papali because they're all tired and they all need resting. I'm not blaming the players here. I'm just saying that this is absolute nonsense. When we go to the World Cup... We have to win a quarter and a semi and a final within 15 days. That's three consecutive test matches in 15 days. Do you not think the best way to prepare your rugby players is to get them playing, playing, playing? Why am I an idiot? No, you're not the idiot. And this is I'm still just amazed at Sky TV that they're allowing this to happen. This is the demise of their company. If they lose interest in rugby, they're going to lose their subscribers. They fall over. You know, I've already said this, they've invested $470 million in the game over five years. If you're going to do that, you want to make sure that you've got a high level of engagement. You want to make sure in the long term you are securing that particular investment, aren't you? I have just had a guts full of wrapping our little all blacks up in cotton wool because life's so hard. You know, we get paid a million dollars a year, but you guys don't get it. It's so tough. Now, we heard the interview a couple of weeks ago that you did with um, Braden Curry. Look, there was a time where we were told that women couldn't run marathon because the uterus would fall out in all seriousness. And then we suddenly realised that's not the case. We've had Erin Baker, we've had women doing Ironman, and we've now got some of the best women in the world running these 100-mile events. And stop dumbing it down. Show me a competition in the world that does this, Martin. I mean, you don't see it in the English Premier League. I mean, I might play four or five cup competitions, and yes, they'll be the, they will rest key players but they're playing up to three games a week and this and that's over a sort of a seven eight nine month season and you sort of can understand that a little bit you don't see any the NFL and they'll go well oh, the NFL it's not quite the same well they'll tell you that anytime there's a collision in the NFL it's basically like being in a car accident they're there every week look at the NRL look at the popularity these guys have got two billion dollar television deals for a reason rugby sits there on a two three four hundred million dollar deal I mean it's just ridiculous we want to see the best players why is the nba so successful because they've built up their stars and they are available every week and you can get along 80 games in a regular season baseball is 160 games in the regular season we can see it martin we can see that rugby is in trouble we can see the crowds are diminishing we can see the television numbers are dropping off not that sky would ever admit it but you've only got to go around and basically uh survey 10 of your mates and it all comes back the same oh, i'm just not interested anymore i mean i do it all the time but so many different groups oh we just nah yeah it just doesn't have the same anymore and yet so you, you look it's on a downward slide why can't they see it who are these people and please show me the evidence last year because this was in place last year, how this helped the All Blacks. <laughs> exactly, Take me yeah. back to 2019 yeah, and show it, me yeah. how yeah. this 
healthy All Blacks. Yeah. Now, we had an opportunity last year, Martin. You mentioned three games in the space of 15 days. Well, we had an opportunity on that end of the year tour last year exactly to right. replicate that. And what did we do? Oh, no, we rested and rotated. We rested and we rotated. I keep saying this. Go back to 2011. The two best All Blacks in that team that year were Jerome Kaino and Kevin Mialama. And they played and they every goddamn played minute. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. every single play. game. I think, I think in that World oh, Cup, I mean, I, I'm Kano sorry, didn't play. Kano, Kano, sorry, Kano didn't play. He only he he missed forty five seconds of all seven of those matches. Forty five seconds is all he missed, and he was the best player at that tournament and the best player in twenty fifteen. Well, look, I was one of those people where I said, look, I don't think Dan Carter is the right guy in 2015. He was playing terrible rugby, and it's, it's all very well to be a coward wise after the fact. But he actually started to play good rugby when he started playing consistently. How often was that guy wrapped in cotton wool and then he'd go back out there, pick up another little niggle because he just wasn't, you know, battle hardened. And I'm encouraging people out there, shove it up New Zealand rugby. They don't care about you, the fan. They don't. Sky Television don't care about you, the fan. You know, they just live on the past. They're just so damn bloody arrogant. I, I was out at, you know, I was down at Muruwai Beach the other day and there would have been 400 surfers out there, 400 surfers the other night because the West Coast has actually been okay with these storms. And I'm just looking at it going, 20 years ago, you would have had 20 out here. What, what, what I'm actually saying is we've evolved as New Zealanders. We are now into so many sports and these traditional sports that have always had it their own way can't afford to be as arrogant as they have been and continue to be. I, I mean, no one, the, the interest is not there. And rather than trying to address the issue, they still continue to put the finger up. I yeah. mean, look at Super Rugby, Martin. I mean, it's a shadow of the competition at once. Size. We don't have South Africa here. I mean, Fiji and and um, Moana Pacifica. I mean, they're basically the dregs after those nations have been pillaged by the other Super Rugby sides. They're never going to be really competitive. You'll be lucky to get one or two Australian teams competitive. So basically, half your competition's a joke anyway. And then on top of that, you haven't got your best players playing. Meanwhile, I've got access to the English Premier League. I've got access to the NBA. I've got access to the NFL. I've got access to all these other sports. Why should I sit down there and watch rugby? Why? Apologise to me! Let's talk about the gay All Black Campbell Johnston coming out. Look, I, I did a piece on Twitter, and of course, you know, it's it's the wrong place to try and have a conversation because people just are basically the anonymous wanker bunch, and they just fly off, don't they, the ferals? But the point I was trying to make here, mate, is that very simply. I don't care because it doesn't bother me. I marched for homosexual law reform in 1985. I had glass jugs thrown at my head. I was abused and all of this kind of stuff. The legislation passed in 1986. 36 or 37 years later, I just really, every time this comes up, I just think, oh my God, really? Are we still talking about this? Surely that, that this doesn't have to be an issue. I understand the importance of it because he is a past all black. And I also think, listen, if it if it inspires somebody, if it helps somebody, if it, if it encourages somebody, if it makes somebody feel better, all the well and good. But the way that the story is covered, and it's only covered like this in New Zealand, it's a minor event around the rest of the world, but the way that the mass media cover it here, ramming it down your throat like it's meant to be something that we all stop, stop the world, my God, this is, I mean, really, is it wrong for me to say, I oh, look, okay, sure, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't really register with me, I just, I just don't, it just doesn't care that much about it, so what to me, and mm. am I, what am I wrong for feeling like that? No, look, I think I think you're right. I mean, I've known about the Campbell Johnson situation for a long time now. I've got friends who are close to the All Blacks, who have been All Blacks, who will tell me, you know, look, yeah, Campbell Johnson um, is a gay man, and that's, you know, great. And, you know, I've, Good you on know, him. It's not, it's not my it's not my place to come out and put that out there in public. It's his it's his personal thing, and if he wants to come out and announce that, that's up to him completely. And good luck to him. But it's a bit like the whole rainbow jersey thing in the rugby league. Are we still going down this path? Haven't we got there? I mean, you, you no, obviously at, we um, haven't, mate. Obviously we haven't, you, because the same you, is you, with the with you, the same with the ANBL mark where the what is it the the Cairns side half the players saying for religious reasons they don't want to wear it. I suppose it's a good reminder to us that we haven't gone down the path yet. Yeah, yeah, but look, equally, I mean, it, it's predominant in women's sport, isn't it? Athletes being gay, more predominant, I mean... Seems you know, so, you know, yeah. Large, maybe it's easy for them to come out. I don't know, maybe it's easy for yeah. them to be accepted, I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, but I also just like it, isn't it? We just love that sort of stuff. We're just such a small, myopic little country, and the way our media operate... I'm like, I've just stopped watching the news, I've stopped watching buying newspapers and reading stuff anymore, Martin. I just can't be bothered with it all. And, yeah, look, I, I, I'm with you on it. Great that he's come out. 
and hopefully, hopefully, there's some young men out there who play rugby who think, oh, okay, it's actually okay now. Because, look, you know, as Elton John said, um, he said, look, you know, um, growing up in his era in the 70s and 80s, he said, look, I wish I wasn't gay because of everything that he had to deal with and everything that he had to tolerate with. And I say this to people. I mean, people don't, don't um, become gay, don't become transgender because it's trendy and because it's cool. It, it's an overriding... Um, it's an overriding uh, you know, biological thing, which, yeah. Internal, physical, are, emotional, you that's should, it. You're just who you yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wake up and, one day, and yeah, you sure. Should be, and, you should be, and you should be entitled to live life like everybody else and have everybody else's um, benefits that go with it. But clearly, that hasn't been the case, but I'd like to think we are there now. But, um, yeah, this sort of stuff, oh, game-changing moment and all the rest of it, you go, well, yeah, is it? I mean, there's been a lot of athletes overseas that have stood up and come out and I think have given hope to a, a lot of people that might be struggling with it. But, look, well done to him. Um, I just, again, it's just the media disappoint me. The media just need to politicise everything now. They need to just put a, 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 what's the word? They just need to, a, a, um, um, you know, a tabloid. Everything just needs to be almost tabloidy now, doesn't it? And it's just disappointing. And it just, yeah, it just takes the light off stuff. And, you know, we'll get it for a week and two weeks. And then you get all these other All Blacks coming out and they jump on it. And they do a whole lot of virtue signalling as well. Do you like Djokovic? Um, as a, as, as, is he an easy guy for you to like as a tennis player? Obviously, I admire the way he plays tennis. You don't have to like every athlete in the world. And he's probably the greatest ever. And he will be the greatest ever. But he's, I just find him a hard person to like. Or to, you know, every time he plays, I kind of hope he's going to lose. You know, what is wrong with me on that? I should be celebrating the guy's talent, shouldn't I? Yeah, the problem is, though, he came through with the great Federer. He came through with the great Nadal, who I think endeared themselves. I don't think you can have three heroes. I think you've always got to have a hero, but you've always got to have a villain. And oh, look, I'll be honest, um, Federer, I think, probably in terms of being the consummate professional and the consummate gentleman, I think very hard to dislike him. Um, look, I love McEnroe for different reasons. McEnroe was a brat, but McEnroe had some personality. I love the Jimmy Connors. I love those guys that just showed their emotion. I've always been, look, I'm a big cynic when it comes to drugs and sport, Martin. Um, and like in the industry, there's a level of corruption. We know how rife drugs are in sports like cycling and track and field and probably even in swimming, anything that's sort of aerobic-based. I, I, I find it, I just struggle with the sheer consistency of some of these guys, the fact they can play five sets, bounce back and bounce back so quickly and be able to recover and two days later look bulletproof. I get suspicious when I hear stories of Djokovic walking around a few years ago, Rod Laver Arena, and he's deliberately been seen with an oxygen bottle and an oxygen mask on. And it sort of, yeah, it sort of reminds me of Lance Armstrong just setting up charities and writing really lovely books and endearing himself to the public. Oh, there's no way he could be a cheat. Look, look at the man. Look at what he's doing. And so I've always been a little bit suspicious of him. I've probably been a little bit suspicious of Nadal. Um, why do I tend to give Federer a pass on that one? Um, yeah, I have to think long and hard at times. But no, Djokovic... Yeah, I, I struggle with them. And I think also, too, mate, maybe we do have a prejudice towards those athletes that come sort of more slightly out of that sort of more Europe, Eastern Europe part of the world, and perhaps we can't relate to them. And um, do, uh, do we like the fact that he is surpassing Roger Federer? Does that irk us? Because we want Federer to be the GOAT. Apologise to me! Final topic of conversation then, uh, this story, and I'm going to use broke and inverted commas. Uh, there's a couple of people, ladies and gentlemen, who work for the different mainstream media organisations, and you'll find that whenever a, a rugby story uh, that is uh, that is supposedly a scoop is dropped in any of these media organisations, ask yourself, just be a little bit suspicious about this, about where are these two particular people getting these stories from? Who is feeding them this information? And for New Zealand rugby, I point the finger absolutely to leak this story about how they are going to be selecting a new coach halfway through the year and banding the names Robertson around, banding the names Jamie Joseph. It kind of slipped, it slipped a little by the wayside, this story, earlier in the week because of the, the Auckland floods and everything else. So it didn't quite get the traction that perhaps it would have got. I find this really insulting on a couple of levels. A, that New Zealand rugby, that somebody is feeding information here. And I find that in World Cup year, when we do have a coach in place, like him or hate him, love him or loathe him, whatever, 
that we have a guy in place who is charged with trying to win that World Cup. The disruption and also just the underhandedness, the backstabbing that goes on. It doesn't make me feel very good that, you know, as you say, as you keep saying, the fish rots from the head down. When you have New Zealand rugby, who are in a shambles at the moment, who tried to sack Foster last year and the CEO lost his bottle and didn't have the cherries to do it, and now they're kind of laying the groundwork here. Ian Foster hasn't even declared whether he wants to stay after the World Cup. And if he wins the World Cup, he's got every goddamn right to stay because that's what we charge him with, winning that tournament. And he might be the best coach, the worst coach, but if if the All Blacks win the World Cup, he then is a World Cup winning coach. I don't like it. I know there's a process and I know that we cocked it up last time and we got to go early, but there's something about this which is just a little distasteful for me, the way that it's leaked and who's doing the leaking. Oh, look, Martin, uh, firstly, a couple of things. Um, Ian Foster, uh, um, he's charged with winning the World Cup. Part of it, oh, it needs to be more than that for me. Otherwise, as I said, we make rugby once every four years. It is, mate. Accept it. That's all it is, on, Mark. It's, yeah, that's yeah. all it is these no, days, mate. That, it's it, well, it's that, that, nothing that, that, outside that, the World that, Cup. That's what, that's what rugby's that, done to itself. Yeah, but that's disappointing, and we need to shift that thinking, and the job description needs to be broader than that. Uh, look, the fact that they are going to put this up says that they still don't have faith in Ian Foster. So why didn't they sack him last year? They didn't sack him because they lack guts and they lack leadership and they're indecisive. Um, everything that's going on at the moment, I mean, right down to Mark Robertson, how much due diligence did they do on this guy? You know, we've got all this virtue signalling where we've got to now make sure that we've got representation across the board with women and ethnic backgrounds and the whole lot. And so do you lose a real level of expertise when you do that? You tick some boxes, but do you lose a real level of expertise? Is there too much indecisiveness? Are, are we a bit like getting rid of the song Delilah? Well, yeah, we can't do that because we might upset somebody and if we do this and, you know, and, and you just end up on one... Co- you know, consultation. I just need a Wayne Brown. I need somebody who's going to come in and just be brutally honest and just get the job done. This is my vision. This is what I've said I'm going to do, and I'm going to go on and I'm going to go and do it. Hang on a second. And Wayne Brown. Wayne Brown. The whole world hates Wayne Brown, according to the mass media, apart from the 181,000 people that voted oh, for him. Oh, Isn't this same, incredible? The, same, the way that those... The same, the, the same mass media The same mass media that just couldn't see any wrong in Jacinda Ardern whatsoever. Yeah, of course. Mate. And also, you know, sitting there, I'm, I'm laughing at these articles that are coming out at the moment. So Auckland's infrastructure is completely stuffed. We know that. But if this rain had happened a year ago with Phil Goff in charge, what would 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 the would the would the drains have coped? Would Auckland? Of course, it bloody wouldn't. But would the media have treated oh, him mate, any differently? No. You know that they would have. It's just oh, pathetic, and- mate. This the personal petty agendas going on in the Herald and stuff, and the television and news programs, so so called news programs as well. It's laughable now. I mean, it's it's not it's well, not it's, actually uh, news and it's not journalism, mate. It's just it's the Women's Weekly in disguise with a whole lot of very narrow-minded, yeah. angry. Uh, annoying, you know, little wokesters who have decided that that their opinion is more important than actually reporting fact. That's why, and I tell you this for a fact, mate, 90% of New Zealand got their news about the Auckland floods off social media and Twitter especially. That's where they got it from. Yep. Well, well, I tell you what, if it was a Cepho Collins mayor, we'd still be sitting there, we still would have made a decision, but the media would have just said, hey, how compassionate this man is, how thoughtful and how lovely this man is. I'm just over it all. But just look, going back to your point regarding New Zealand rugby, there just needs to be a fundamental change. We've got to have someone that comes in with some vision, mate. We've got to have someone that can look beyond the current way Super Rugby is set up, that can look at this, talk about those issues we talked about, not having players being rested, not allowing the Players Association the tail wagging the dog, having transparency, making sure that we keep our coaching intellectual property in this country. Um, you know, how do we get people back on board? I'm just not sure you're going to get rugby followers back on board. I think the domestic competitions, as long as they continue doing what they do, they've lost everybody. The All Blacks are starting to do it as well. Hey, look, just finally, Martin, you mentioned right at the top there, um, talking about uh, Ruby Tui. And we, I know there was a bit of a discussion. Uh, you know, if you're going to play rugby, put some time back into leveraging that World Cup success. You know, you didn't make the World Cup. The World Cup made you. Now she's going to go to Sky Television. Can I just put that out to your listeners out here? Would you rather have Ruby Tui or Ian Smith? Devlin. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. The Platform.